World Cup winning coach Sir Steve Hansen joins us, and we thank you so much for your time, mate. Look, uh, I, I'm I'm still in euphoric mode after being inside that stadium on the Saturday night. It really was something. Yeah, it was really special, wasn't it? And uh, you know, it's a different atmosphere to the men's game too. It's more mums and dads and kids, and it hasn't been uh, tainted by professionalism uh, to the point that the men's game has and expectations. And scrutiny of you know of the men's game. We go there and we're all tense because are they going to win? And you know, whereas we go there, we to the women's game with the idea of enjoying the rugby and enjoying the moment, which is what it's all about. And one occasion, it's awesome. yeah. And you look, you're so right. I mean, I don't think you know anyone could sum it up actually better than that. And I, I, I and I don't know how we we kind of get back to that with the men's game. I hope the genie's not out of the bottle, Steve, because. <laughs> We've been so harsh, especially this year on our All Blacks. We're so goddamn critical. We don't give them, a, a, you know, an even break. And 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 maybe it is that. Maybe it's that sheer expectation of standard and legacy and and, and what we want from the team. Yeah, and I, look, I, I think it's not so much can we bring them back because I don't think we can. I think that's you know that legacy is embedded and that, but those expectations are there. What we've got to do is look after the women's game so it doesn't have to go there. And you know it's like it's an organic game, the women's game, and it's the way rugby um, used to be when we were all amateurs. And you know, so there's no doubt the women's game is going to go professional. It has to, um, but we've still got to be able to protect some of those those good things that amateur rugby um, has. And and the not it's not naivety, but the the um, the openness and the and the freshness of, of the women's game, we need to be able to try and protect and learn the lessons from the men's game that we didn't get right. Yeah, I don't know whether it's in, in innocence, but there's certainly a relatability there. Um, and, and and I suppose the underdog status helps, doesn't it? I mean, the All Blacks, we, all, we you know, we love our All Blacks when we've got the backs against the wall and, you know, we're perceived to be, you know, the second best team or whatever. And and I do wonder how much of that, that, that Black Ferns with what happened last year, the, you know, the weight of expectation, there was a lot of hope there, but also most people probably went to that game thinking England were a better side. Yeah, but there's sometimes the All Blacks, uh, you know, the Dakota games and the opposition are better sides, but people don't give them that break. And and so when I mean the innocence, I, I think it's about, uh, you know, you look at the athletes themselves, uh, they're still not tied into a professional contract where they're scrutinised every every minute of every second. And, and that, you know, Ruby's a beautiful example like she just expresses herself so naturally and so openly without any fear of of you know her walls are completely down well you won't get an all black like that because his walls are up because he's, he's not sure what's going to happen if he says those things and that, that that's the innocence i'm talking about and you know we've got to make sure we we protect that because it's a part of the game that we really love in the women's game I mean, but being you know, involved with the All Blacks as long as you have, and I mean, you copped it as well, like, you know, copped heavy criticism as as, as as well. Can we re-establish that bond of trust? I mean, because I know the conduits, the media, and but I mean, there seems to be a resentfulness there a lot of the time as well. It is, or as you say, is it just built up now that there's just it's, it's not going to change? Because there were great personalities in that All Black side. Let's make no mistake about that. Yeah, there is, and you know, but it's a mindset thing, isn't it? You mentioned the media and. I don't know if you watched the men's game uh, last night, but you know I had to turn the commentary off because I, I just saw it so negative. Um, yet you know the game has still had 20, 30 minutes to go, and you know we're starting to talk about the first time we're ever going to lose to Scotland and all these negative commentations <coughs> rather than actually talking about the game. And you know we won the game, we end up winning it pretty easy, and you know like. What coaches have to make take some risks when when they're playing some of these lesser nations, and and Fozzie did that. He was brave enough to do that. He gave some players some valuable international experience, and uh, you know Scotland aren't an easy team to play. So I don't think we respect the opposition enough either. And you look back at all the games we've played during my time. That whenever we played Scotland, they were always tough. But you know you still had to take the risk of playing a a not your top side because you had to grow people. He did oh. that and he got the reward, didn't he? 
He, oh, well, I mean, look, and, 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 and also, if this wasn't happening before a World Cup next year and then we get to the World Cup and we, we're down on players because of injuries and we do have to blood people, will he'd wear it for that? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I've thought all year, mate, the guy's in an invidious position where he basically can't seem to do anything right in a lot of people's minds. And yet here we are. We're, you know, one win away from finishing the year on a real high three wins in a row. But again, will that make people happy? Let's go back to the women's game, though. Just breaking it down against England... Two contrasting styles as well. That's what I loved about it. Like, you know, we, we were desperate to continue to play our, our attacking game, spread the ball wide, try and, you know, try and get them moving all around the field. And 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 they were absolutely stuck in that they get the ball and they were going to roll him all us out of the game. Well, they played to their strengths and we tried to play to ours. And, uh, you know, there were six more, in, six more tries. They got four, we got two. So... Um, you know, I, I think there's a question there for World Rugby to have a look at. Is the mall actually operating fairly? Because can you stop it? Once it's set up, you can't stop it. But I don't believe, and it needs to be looked at. But uh, the ironic thing was England opened the game by moving the ball all over the place and put us under a bit of pressure and scored two nice tries, and then they reverted, um, you know, to their to their strengths, and uh, in the end, you know, it wasn't enough and and uh, yeah, job done, wasn't it? What a wonderful way for it to finish too. Like you couldn't think of a better way for it to finish with a, a five meter yeah. line out. Everyone's got their heart and their mouth thinking, "Oh, here we go, they're going to get another one." And and uh, Jonah gets up and and pinches the ball off them. So um, you know, full credit to them. The coaching input of your old mates Wayne and and Ted um, coming back into that Blackfern side. Just looking at it, what what do you see that they did that they brought? Well, I, I think they brought respect. That's the biggest thing, and were able to get the rugby union to come on board with certain things that needed to be uh, changed and adjusted. And um, you know, uh, I don't know that. Uh, Ted did a lot of coaching. I think he was there more to give advice, but Crono was there, and um, yeah, and and the other coaches that were in the team as well all did a good job. Um, being driven by Smithy, so um, yeah, time allowed them to get them some of the issues that they had last year, uh, fitness, um, you know, selections. Uh, change. There's people that were left out that had been permanent figures in the in the in the team and some of those people were contracted players and you know they missed out and it's tough for them but uh, I think that was a big turnaround like getting fit and selecting the right players then you've got a base right how do we want to play the game and and um, the philosophy was to move the ball and and play fast and you know they, they had selected the athletes to do that so full credit again to them. So in terms of your daughter, Whitney, where is she at right now? We're going to have to get new coaches for this. Are we in a position, Steve, where we can actually promote from within? Are, they, are, they, are those, when you take Ted away, Crono away, and you take Smithy away, Cap, you know, are, are, are the Knicks up to that level again, or are we going to have to actually bring some outside in again and, and keep developing? I mean, you would know better than everyone. Um, look, I, I, I know how good a coach Whitney is, but... Um, don't know a lot about where's. Um, however, I, look, I think the, the answer to that question is is not for me to give. I think the answer is for the New Zealand Rugby Union to do some real good um, reviewing of the team. And and you know you've you've got Ted, you've got Wayne, you've got Crono, three very very experienced men who'll give you honest answers to to decent questions. So they've got to form the right questions and. Say, well, what is working? What did work? What didn't work? What's not necessary? What is necessary to make this team even better? And who are the people we think um, could do it? And, you know, out of that will fall the answer. <sighs> okay. Do they have, you know, I mean, is the Brains Trust the right people in place to do this? Because you mentioned right, you know, right at the very beginning. I mean, to, 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 to develop this game now, to take it to the next level, it's got to go professional and everything else. I mean, are the right people in place in that rugby union? Or, or do we, or do they need other outside voices to actually join them around the table and, and try and get as many good brains around that table? Uh, well, it's always good to get, you don't just have to rely on people that are... Um, that are there, but you've got. I've just mentioned three guys that 
have been at the coalface, so they'll know better than anybody else. And but when you do the reviewing, it's about getting the right people and and um, uh, but more importantly, asking the right questions. And you know, most of the time when we review, we we ask the players and. You know, sometimes the players aren't right either and there's a big risk of them not being and as honest as they they should be or because they answer the questions emotionally you know around oh, well, did I get selected or didn't I get selected so I think if they do a thorough questioning of everybody and they'll come up with the right answer. Steve Hansen is with us on the platform so how to capitalize and monetize on this women's game now um how you know i mean i've i've i i don't believe right now financially it can be independent and stand and and uh, sustainable but it can be in the future i'm just saying today you know it, it, it is still in its fledgling stage but this is a really big moment to try and and hold what is there now you've got a big catchment as you said right at the beginning different faces different fans a real engagement so what has to happen from here right you know in the in the immediate term do you think well, we have to have the resources to to deal with um, the catchment. Like, there's going to be a lot of young girls uh, who are going to want to play rugby because they've been uh, part of. They've seen this. They've got role models who they're looking at now, thinking, oh, "I want to be like her." And you know, you, you look at someone like Kendra. Koch, she's played 68 test matches, and you know, probably playing three or four test matches a year. That that's a massive amount of time and and uh, uh, effort gone into being one of the best players in the world for such a long time. So, Porsche, another one, like the Ruby, another one. You just keep reeling them off, and there'll be little girls all over the country who will be saying, well, I want to be like her, and isn't that wonderful? But now we've got to be able to support them with the infrastructure of coaching. And, um, you know, do we, do we let them play in boys teams or do you know at an early age and then separate them as they get a bit older and physically the differences in their physiques um strength wise and so forth uh take place and we separate them you know so what's the plan going to be and someone uh within our organization and within sport needs to to look at that and say right oh this is this should be the plan because it's not as easy, is it, as just thinking, okay, now we've got all these eyeballs on, um, okay, that means that the next time that a women's rugby team runs out for Farah Palmer Cup, because we saw that there was no audience there for that, and, and so, you know, and I'm not decrying that, I'm just saying that's the truth, the MPC struggling to get live crowds, Super Rugby isn't filling yeah. out its stadiums, you know, it's, and so that's why I say, look, at the moment, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a question for all of rugby how to re-engage, but this has actually happened naturally and organically, as you said, so again, yeah. that's just something that's got to be thought about, isn't it? Okay, yes, it's there in everyone's minds, but the longer it's not, well, then you know people turn their attention quickly to something else. So again, that well, kind of... see, look, that's what we've got to look at as well. And so, well, what 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 have we done at these games that have excited people? What what's been the the reason why the fans have been excited? And, and yes, it's about the rugby they're watching but it's also the atmosphere so what's the atmosphere that we've created that's allowed this to happen and and replicate it and um, there's no doubt there'll be more people going to watch Farah Palmer Cup um, will, will it fill the stadiums probably not but you know that that's a time a time thing I think you know if you'd have said to any person in New Zealand that there'd be 41,000 people watch a women's game of football in New Zealand um, 20 years ago, they'd have laughed at you. Yeah. Uh, even 10 years ago. So it's progressing. Uh, is it progressing as fast as we'd all like? Probably not. But, um, you know, the old saying, it is what it is. And it is what it ain't. So we, we, we've just got to deal with what we have and, and make sure that we keep creating that family atmosphere that I think. That, you know, the people I've spoken to have just said, you know, it's not, it's different. It is um, different. It's totally it's different, different, mate. It's a, totally different. And and we've got to work out what the difference is and and try and reinforce that and maybe even bring it back to the men's game when we're creating that um, that side of it. So, you know, we're not dictated to to when we play the game by by uh, big sponsors. Um, for TV audiences elsewhere in the world, we play the game at you know a reasonable time that our kids can go. And um, you know, I think there's a few things they can learn, but you, you've got to be prepared to look at it and and uh, you know then say right, 
this is what we're going to do and we're going to keep that keep this keep this get rid of that don't need that need that so forth and you know it just it needs some time and it needs some energy put into it and probably resources yeah, because, you know, I know that, you know, with professionalism, it's all been about the All Blacks. That's been, the you know, the peak of the pyramid. But to be honest, mate, the best rugby that I've gone to in the last, last couple of years, I went to club day at the Takapuna Club for uh, semi-finals day, and there's about 3,000 people there. Same kind of crowd, though. A lot of kids running around, and um, not you know, and, and but just fun. And then you go on Saturday, and you get fun again. And, you know, I mean, and look, the Sevens was, was bloody good fun for a while as well. More more of that word attached to rugby, do you think? It's meant to be fun, isn't it? I mean, we play it and watch it because it's meant to be fun. That's right. And, and, and uh, you know, if you, if, if you take the men's game, we've taken a lot of the fun away from them by, by our expectations and by the, the constant scrutiny of everything they do. It's not good enough. And, you know, if you, if you had your family and you kept telling everybody it's not good enough, it's not good enough, it's not good enough, then, you know, you have a breakdown. So, um, as I said last night, I turned the, the the volume of the TV down because I just couldn't cope with all the negativity coming across the airwaves from the commentators because, you know, they they were starting to panic that we might lose. Like the All Blacks weren't panicking. They were just going through their system and in the end they, they got the job done. So... And there's going to be times when the men, in the men's game and the women's game when when either team will lose, and we have to accept that. But we're not good at it in the men's game, no, because our expectations have been fed to the point where you know we we well you know for ten years we we lost very few games, and and um, before that, you know people have forgotten that we used to lose games. Mm, now and, we lose a few again. Everyone gets all so upset about and everything else. So. Well, yeah, and and uh, and rightfully know, so. I mean, we don't want our All Black standards to drop, mate. I mean, you know that. I mean, that's you know that's probably but, the, but the, the all standards Blacks. aren't going to drop just because because we as fans and supporters um, can accept when they get beaten. The All Black standards are so strong internally that externally, it's it's not an issue. But, but but what the external issue it creates is is this um, constant constant scrutiny that says well you know why do they lose they're doing this or someone's you know driving his car too fast or someone else is doing this and someone else is doing that and you know all those things that they're talking about are all part of society they're not part of rugby just part of rugby they're part of society and and but we because a rugby person is doing it it's it's terrible mm. you know that's why they're losing and it's just a load of crap you know well, and and look there's such a massive lesson to be learned when you put the two games beside each other and how we treat them and and uh, you know I, I just hope that we don't go and ruin the women's game because it's got something special about it. Wouldn't it be so good to uh, Yes, we want them to be better, and, and yes, they will get better, but don't lose the, the the good things about what we're seeing at the moment too. Wouldn't it be great to see that Red Roses team back here next year for a three-test series? And I know that there's, you know, everyone will always say, oh, you don't understand how it works, Martin. There's complications, there's draws, there's world rugby. I, I don't care about all that. I'd just love to see a three-test series. I mean, that would be capturing momentum, wouldn't it? You imagine that next year. I reckon Wellington, Dunedin, Auckland, they'd pack the stadiums again for it, us against them. Yeah, well, look, it would be wonderful, but um, what comes with that, we can learn from too. And and you know, the game is only going to go in that direction because that's what the men's game has done, and and that's what history tells us will happen here. So, all I'm saying is that we have to learn from history and and, and make sure we don't allow the 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 negative stuff to to creep in, and let's keep the innocence and the and the wonderment of the women's game uh, where it is so that they can continue to be and deliver the way they do. And, you know, I've got no problem with paying them. I think we should pay them and pay them well. But um, we've got to be able to fund that. We've got to be able to support that. Um, you know, it's wonderful we've now got a proper super competition for them. I think, you know, last year it was abbreviated and, and um, because of COVID, but this year we'll see a proper one and, and we'll see some great rugby come out of that and that's where the momentum will be for a start and then playing more test matches will, will be a bonus.